Hey guys, guys you're with you and I just modeling bench. Welcome back, or welcome aboard. If it's a welcome aboard, don't forget to hit that subscribe down there and hit the notifications bell and you'll get notified whenever I put a video out, which is pretty much every day at the moment. So today's video is all about pack two now of the um of the Hatchet Lancaster Bomber B3 Dambuster. And if you remember in part one, we built the propeller which is very nice and in there we talked about the fact that the propellers apparently spin the wrong way and we talked about how we're going to change how we can change the polarity of the wires just swap the wires over on the motor make them make the um make the propeller spin the right way don't do that yet because if hatchet actually get wind of this and change the software then they will change the polarity at their end and then you'll have to change your wiring back again uh, they may also make new propellers who knows, because we've only built one propeller so far, so they may change them. But I've also shown you how you can alter the blades to make them sort of sit at the right angle for the correct rotation. So there we go. Um, so that's that done. And we also ran it and everything and we got the motor and everything there. And we also had the, um, the interior pieces to put together with the window and everything and the little control panels to go in there. So all very nice. If you haven't seen that, go back and have a look at part one. Um, and if you're thinking you've done this before, you're not going mad. I have done this before. I actually bought parts one to six uh, and thought this is really nice. So I thought I'll get in touch with Hatchet, ask them if they send me a, um, you know, if they prepare to do a sponsor a build or something. And it took them a while to get back to me. So I ended up buying six parts because I wasn't quite sure how far I was going to go. But I was more and more impressed as every part went on. The, the detail in this model is quite astounding. Which is why I'm talking to you now before I start the video, because part two is nothing like as simple as part one. Part two is building up the front turret. And you can see it here. It is here. I haven't glued the clear part on yet. So there's a bit of a gap at the back. But that's the turret, as you can see it there. And it is lovely. It really is very nice indeed uh, for a for a part work model. It is incredible. Um, the detail in there is better than most of the plastic kits on the market. So, uh, yeah, very, very nice indeed. We also have, I know that going forward, the detail in the cockpit is also very, very nice indeed. Um, you can see on this one, we'll talk about it in the video. I haven't done the black work on the canopy, on the clear part, but I'll talk about that in the video and you'll see that. Um, and then I can, I can show you both of them together with them without the black. So you can make your own mind up what you want to do. As you can see, the clear part's just fallen off there. So um, if you are new to this, I'll put a screenshot up now and you can click on the um, the QR code there and you can go and have a look on the Hatchet website and you might decide that you want to build this yourself. Um, and if you do want to, you can start from fresh from part one or if you've already got like parts one, two, three and four, you can start from part five, say. Uh, but whatever you do, you will pay for the first part. When you subscribe, it's like a little gift to thank you for subscribing. You'll pay for the first part and then you get the second part free and then you pay for the third part onwards. So if you've already got parts one to four, you will pay for part five, you'll get six for free, and then you pay for seven. And with your first pack, you will get this here. This is a this is a, a, one of the magazines that comes with it, and it shows you on there a picture of the prototype model. And I say prototype, this is what I'm saying, prototype. A lot of people are talking about the fact this model has no dihedral on it. Um, the Lancaster had about 70 degrees of dihedral per wing uh, and the dihedral started around about here. It's just outside the inboard engines. This model is a development model that has not. It's probably sagging for the weight. But um, Hachette assures us all that the, the, the actual production model that you will build will have dihedral. So that would be good. Um, the other thing that people are talking about, obviously, is the propeller spin backwards. It's easily curable, as we've already discussed. Um, other people are saying the bomb is spinning backwards. As I say, guys, this is a development model. So, you know, take that with a pinch of salt. You know, when you see these, these, uh, you know, cars at car shows, you know, that, that haven't even been released yet, take it with a pinch of salt because generally what comes out is completely different to what they show you initially. So um, there we go. But we can see we've got movable undercarriage. It comes with a stand. It comes with lights. It's got flashing machine guns. It's got everything on it. It's really, really nice. So, um... Yeah, well worth getting. So you'll get that. You'll get the magazine for part one, which has got your instructions in for your parts and everything for part one, as you can see there. Um, and then you've got history. You've got a guide about an article about Guy Gibson. Um, 
there he is there look and we've also got some history about the Lancaster it was called Avro 683 so there you go so that's the information in part one uh, and you'll also get part two as I say which is going to build up the the turret and as you can see from this there's a lot to it uh, you'll see the instructions in a minute when we get down to the bench and then we've got all about Operation Chastise. Again, you'll see all that in a minute. It's very, very, uh, very nicely produced. I'm a bit of a Lancaster nut myself. And there's photographs in these books that I haven't seen before. So I was quite surprised at that. I thought it was just going to be more of the same, you know. But there's pictures in there I haven't seen before. And you'll also get this lovely tin poster uh, that goes on the wall. After me, the flood. So, um... There we go, 617 Squadron up there. We've got the Lancaster having just dropped its bomb. Um, and the, the, the Lancaster's climbing away now to uh, to get away. So there we are. Um, so you get all that. So if you do want to subscribe to this, part one is $1.99. Uh, part two you'll get for free if you subscribe. And you also get that Tim Poster. So worth doing. Um, and a lot of people talk about the cost. Yes, it's going to cost a lot of money come the end but you're paying for it in bite-sized pieces, so that makes life a lot easier for those on a budget. And also you must remember, you know, if you want to get a 30-second scale Lancaster in your life, you're looking at the HK models, which retails about £400, and you're looking at the Border models, which retails at over £600. Um, you know, and then you've got a bare plastic kit that you've got to paint, and believe me, the Border models takes a lot of skill to build. Uh, there's a lot, of, there's over 1,600 parts in that kit, and it's... There's a lot of cleanup to do. There's the, the instructions aren't very good. You need a lot of experience to be able to build that model. So if you are new to the hobby or you're not into scale modeling at all, you just want to build a 132nd scale Lancaster, this is your best bet. As I say, it is expensive. It's going to be about 1,300 quid, something like that over the long run. But, um, you know, even if you get the border model one at 600, you're going to spend another couple of hundred pounds on other bits and pieces for it. So, you know, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be costly, whatever you do. And also with this, You've got all the lights, you've got the motors, you've got the operating undercarriage, you've got the stand, you've got the sounds, you've got the dam. You know, you've got a lot more in this than you get in either of those kits that I just mentioned. So, you know, pays your money, takes your choice. But I'm just trying to cover there the things that people will put in the comments and they will say, you should be telling people how much this costs. The propellers go backwards. You don't have any dihedral. <laughs> be, all those comments will be in there, you believe me. And even though I talk about it, it still gets commented on. So, um... Anyway, without further ado, let's get to, no, let's not get to the bench yet. Why am I doing this talk now? This step, part two, is very, very fiddly, okay? It's not very fiddly to an experienced modeler. I'm 60 now and I've been modeling since I was six. So I've got 54 years of this stuff behind me. Um, and even me after 54 years, it is quite fiddly, okay? For someone who has only done part works or is not into scale modeling at all, you might struggle with this. So that's why this video is quite lengthy, because it shows you cut by cut, stroke by stroke of the file, exactly how I've got this together. I haven't taken anything out. The only bit I miss is on the rear plate. There's a square lug that has to go into a hole. And the square lug is quite it's quite a lot bigger than the hole. So that needs filing out. But, you, you know, you've, all, you've already seen me do filing earlier on in the video. So you don't need to see me show you how to file a face. You know how to do that. Um, and we'll cover the glue I use and everything and, and, and all sorts. So sit back and enjoy yourself. Get yourself a cup of tea or a can of beer or something, whatever you fancy. And uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And as I say, if you are building one of these, get your iPod or whatever next to you. And if you are struggling... Watch how I do it bit by bit. I will show you every single piece, every single adjustment. As I say, every stroke of the knife, every stroke of the file, you'll see all of it. OK, so um, I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you all for part three, maybe next week, depending on when it arrives. OK, so here we have pack two, as you can see, all ready to go, not even opened yet. And then here we have this is what we have left of part one. Um, as you can see, well, the little battery tester there. We're going to use that in this part as well. So make sure you've got that one to hand. We've got a propeller there. We've got our interior there with our little bits and pieces all glued on, as you can see. And then we've got our nose section there. And this is what I was talking about, this little pitot tube. This is actually supposed to glue onto there. Like so, like that. OK, with a drop of super glue, that's going to glue in there. So as you can imagine, 
that is going to be very very easily snapped off sitting there like that so especially when you bear in mind this is metal and this is plastic so we need to just put it down a bit heavy once and that's just going to snap off so i suggest leaving that to the end the other thing i suggest is go and get yourself a little takeaway pot like this one this is a little um curry sauce pot from my local, local Chinese takeaway and as you can see it's a large one because I like a large curry sauce and uh, very very handy stick them in a dishwasher clean them out and they're brilliant for keeping your model parts in and if you put the top on properly it doesn't matter if it gets knocked over or whatever you're not going to lose anything it's also worth bearing in mind these things here as I said I've already done this once so I've got two lots these little parts here they hold the end of propeller blades make sure you keep hold of them we may need them in the future and then also going forward you're going to end up with lots of little screws. There's another antenna there for the other side, which you're to, they're telling you to glue on. It's going to get even, that's even flimsier. So that one's going to get broken off. So make sure you keep it on in little bags. Keep all your spare screws. Keep them in the bags because they're marked AM, AP, whatever. You can see there we've got two bags with AM on. So I could uh, I could cut those, put those back together. But um, keep your little bits and pieces in a bag and you can't go wrong. Um, and then put them all in a pot like that and it saves you having to keep these great big trays so I'm going to get this out of here because we're going to need this going forward and I'm going to put this over here to one side because we don't need it right so here we have pack two let's have a look in here so we'll get this one open in fact I'm going to use my knife to slice through there and we'll get this out. I like to open everything on screen and then you're seeing it fresh with me. Although it's not fresh because I've done all this before. So we'll put the parts to one side over here out of the way. And then we can have a look at our magazine. And I'm going to turn this overhead light off because it makes it a lot easier to see the magazine. So here we are, Lancaster Bomber B3 Part 2. This is Pack 2. I, I must start calling it pa Part. It's Pack. And we can see here the lights coming down, shining on. And we see the bomb there been dropped. So very, very nice. It's actually not a bomb, is it? it's a mine. So going into the magazine, we've got all the contact numbers here we can get in touch with if you want back orders or subscriptions or whatever. It's all in here worldwide. You can get in touch with them. So in this issue too, we've got build your model. So we're going to have all the instructions about building the turret. And as you can see, it's very, very complex this part. There's a lot to it. So make sure you watch this video carefully. If you're not an experienced modeler, I'm going to show you how to get over all the little issues because there are a lot of little tiny issues. Nothing that's going to stop you building it, nothing to make you run away scared. But there's a couple of issues that may make it a little bit difficult to fit together. So I'm going to try and make that easier for you. So in here, we're looking at history and legacy. So Operation Trastise. And we're also looking at the bomber in action, Barnes Wallace and his revolutionary bouncing bomb. I say we call it a bomb. It was actually a mine. So um, gun turret and fuselage. The other thing that's nice about these, uh, this model from Hatchet, you've got all these little parts in here and they give you an exact description of what they all are. OK, so um, you've, you've got all the names there of all the different pieces and all the different. When, when you look at other parts inside the cockpit, it's really handy to see what all the little panels are called and everything rather than just having it as a panel. So here you can see we've got our assembly instructions going forward. You can see there's lots to it and uh, lots more there fitting that glazing, which can be a bit difficult. And uh, there we go. So we're in to hit the magazine here. There's Guy Gibson of 617 Squadron. And he was only 25 years old when he led this squadron. And here you can see Operation Chastise, May 1943. The bombers of 617 Squadron, the Dambusters, attacked Germany's Ruhr Valley Dams, breaching two of them and flooding the surrounding countryside. And a uh, terrible, terrible thing to happen. But um, it was deemed as a success because it was seen as a successful raid and the morale of the people in, in Britain went, you know, went, was great. So um, it was all good there. Um, but obviously many people lost their lives and, and animals and wealth and, and livelihoods and everything. So uh, we mustn't forget that side of things as well. Um, so talking here about Barnes Wallace, we got here how he formed a squadron, special adaptions and um, very interesting bits and pieces to read here. These magazines really are very good. Uh, you can see there's a bomb there being dropped. It looks like that's one of the spherical ones. Um, all the other aircraft had left. But as soon as we came over the moon, they were, th they were throwing 20 millimetre as. I think there was some that were 37. And that's from Sergeant Ken Brown. So that's attacking the Mona Dam. And then we've got a fact file here. And this is a list of all the aircraft that took part. And uh, unfortunately, the ones that are marked with a star, they were the ones that uh, didn't, didn't get back. So um, terrible, terrible, terrible losses there were at the time. 
And then here you can see the Banksing bomb fitted to the underneath of the Lancaster. Very, very few photographs because these aircraft were very, very secret, even up until, you know, when the actual film, the, the Dambusters film was made, even then it was still a secret about how the bomb was and everything. And you notice in the film, it was like a spherical shape, as you can see here. Uh, this is a high ball, a smaller version, um, which was also developed by uh, Barnes Wallace, but it had a wooden case around it to make it spherical. And then the, the, the wooden case kept breaking up on impact. And then they realized that the bomb actually carried on even just as a, you know, as a cylinder. So they just made it as a cylinder rather than a sphere. Um, and you can see here something I forgot to say. All of these here, they've got ED-937, ED-939, ED-925. They all have a G after them as a suffix. It's actually a forward slash G, I believe, on the aircraft. Um, and that G meant that the aircraft had to be guarded. So it wasn't until the aircraft actually arrived at Scampton, where the mission went from, where 617 were based, um, it wasn't until they arrived there that the G was actually painted over. And the G on there meant that the, G, that the aircraft had to be guarded at all times because it was obviously very, very secret and they didn't want any information about this getting back to Germany. So uh, there's, there's the big man himself, Barnes Wallace, and um, lots of information about it here. Really, really interesting. And then here you can see, we go over the page, coming in part three, we have the cockpit canopy, the nose section, the Bombay floor or Bombay roof, which is part of the cockpit floor. We have the nose blister and we have the uh, little window at the back there, the little um, astrodome at the rear of the uh, the rear of the, cap the cockpit. So it goes all together very, very nice. And it does look very, very nice when it's made. In fact, I'm going to cheat. There it is. So we'll be putting all that together when we do part three. So um, there we go. Right, so we got the magazine finished with. So no, we're not. We need the instructions, don't we? Duh. So first things first, we're going to check off all our parts. Now, what I'm going to do here is with my scalpel. This is how I open this. Is just stab it in the side, and then just go round the bottom or cut the plastic open like this. If you are a youngster, maybe ask an adult to do this because if you slip, you will cut yourself probably. And never forget. It's blunt knives that cut people, not sharp ones. Okay, so make sure you put that in the recycling or save it for a background. If you want to do a background for any model aircraft, make it look like it can flight, you could use that. Um, so we have our plastic parts here. We're going to very carefully open this tray. Sometimes when you open them, they can pop apart and all the parts will fly out. So there we go. We'll carefully open that tray. There we are. There we go. So we've got that out. We can go in the recycling. So we have here all our parts and what we can do is lay all the parts out how they are on there or we can just look at them while they're in here. So we'll quickly go through and make sure we've got everything. A basic rule of thumb in here is everything has its place. There's a place for everything and everything has its place. So as long as all these little pockets are filled, you can see you've got this, whoops, chucking it on the floor. You've got this individual little box which has all these individual little parts in it, okay? So as long as everything has got parts in it, then you should be okay. But you can see here, we've got twos. So what we'll do is we'll lay it all out as it is on here, and we'll make sure that we've actually got everything. Okay, there you go. You can see we've got everything laid out just as it is in the book. So we can see we've got all our parts, and we can make sure that everything's good. There's nothing cracked, there's nothing broken. We've got no bent parts or anything. It's all looking good. So, um. Brilliant. Right, I've got that the wrong way around as well. Let's see, make sure we've got both left and right of those. So there we go. And you can see here, if you want to know what any of the bits are, then you can look on here. Like for instance, we've got O2T here, O2T VHF whip aerial. There we go. So you can see if we want to know what these are, O2M left and right, O2M left and right, spent cartridge shoots. So there they go. In this turret, they have these tiny little bags for catching the, the, the shoots but they have no stirrups. Now, I'm looking for information, and if anybody out there who knows about this, please get in touch and let me know. But I personally don't believe they ever had bags fitted them in, in reality. Um, it does seem a little daft they didn't, because you've got to remember that generally the bomb aimer was the nose gunner. So while he was up there firing the guns, there was no one down below him. But in the Dambusters raids, you had a nose gunner and a bomb aimer. So while the guns were being fired at the dams to protect the aircraft, 
then the guy underneath was led there trying to aim the bombs. I've been led to believe that the guy was doing that with a shower of shells landing on his back. To add to that, I have never ever seen the bags hanging down in the nose of a Lancaster bomber, ever. So, but also one addition they did make to the Dan Buster Lanks, they were called Type 464s provisioning. They had stirrups for the gunner to put his feet in, otherwise his feet would have been banging into the head of the, the, um, the bomb aimer or kicking his back or whatever. So they had stirrups for him to put his feet in and I've never seen images of that. So if any of you out there you know, know about this or have images that you, you, your great granddad left behind or whatever, then, you know, please get in touch. I'd love to see. I'd love to know and uh, what they actually had up there. And I, I can't find any reference for that whatsoever. But um, and, I, and I'm, I'm not going to say they didn't have bags, but I've certainly never seen images of them with the bags. So there we go. Right. Enough about the accuracy of stuff. So we're going to look at our manual. So what we can do now, we've got all these bits here together. And we can push all these over here to one side because we're going to be using most of them, if not all of them. So uh, looking in here, before you begin, the parts supplied in the issue are small. So take your time to identify them carefully and fit them according to instructions. This is what I was saying earlier. We suggest you do a dry run assembling the parts up to step three before you glue the parts together. And I will show you why. The plastic parts should be glued together using very small amounts of superglue. We suggest you place a few drops of glue on an old saucer or similar and then dip the tip of a cocktail slick into the glue and apply it to the pegs or sockets as described in the instructions. You may find that some parts are a tight fit. This is due to small amounts of flash from the moulding process or excess paint applied to ensure full coverage. Check the illustrations carefully and always test the fit before applying any glue. And if you are getting new into modelling and you're starting doing your airfix starter sets or whatever, that is the absolute number one golden rule of modeling. Always test fit before applying any glue. OK, don't go putting glue on there and then finding it's too tight. And then when you go to get it apart, it just snaps. Always test fit. If you have any problems with the fit, use a fine file to remove any plastic or paint that is preventing a proper fit. Before you fit the parts to step one together, check that there is a rectangular recess in front of the upright lever in parts O2K, R and L. Use a flat file to remove any flash from this point. You may also need to enlarge the D-shaped sockets. OK, so I'm going to cover that now. Right. So this part here, let's fold this back over so we can see it a bit easier. So these parts here, where are they? They're going to be here somewhere. <laughs> I shouldn't have pushed it all over and made a mess, should I? So these parts here, these are O2K left and right. And what they're asking us to do, this is the one they're showing. OK, they're asking you to make sure... There is a rectangular recess in front of the upright lever. And the reason they're asking you to make sure there is, is because there may be some flash on there. And as we can see on here, if you look there close up, let me grab a pointer. Where's my pointy thing? This recess here, okay, as you can see on this one at the back of it, there's, a, there's some flash. Okay, so we're just going to, I'm going to take my knife. Now this is a scalpel. This is a, a Swan Morton number three with a number 10A scalpel blade. And I'm just going to use this just to scrape out any flash that's in there. OK, you probably can't see what I'm doing, but when you get your model, you will see what I mean. So make sure that's clear. OK, and the same on this side. And as we can see on this, this is better to show you, actually, because this one's worse. This one has the flash as well. You can see that it's flashed over. If I hold it so you've got light background in the background, you can see it's flashed over and it's not a rectangular recess. So what I'm going to do is just use my knife just to remove that little bit of flash. OK, so now we have a nice rectangular recess. OK, so that's the first thing. Right, so that's number one. If you don't want to use a knife, you can get little files like this, okay, and you can just come in with the file and just scrape away any excess with your file, just like so, just like that, just to clean them up, okay, if you're worried about using a knife. Now I can also see we have some flash around these holes, so we're going to clean that off in a minute as well. OK, so we're moving on. Take the two side sections, O2K out, the gun sight O2S, 
which is this part here. Okay, we can see that. And the gunner's seat at O2H. Noting the orientation, check the fit of the D-shaped pegs on the side of the parts O2S and O2H in the sockets of O2K and O2R as indicated. The pegs fit in the shaped outer holes. When you are happy with the fit, apply a drop, try to drop a super glue. Remember, it's set up here, test fit. Okay, so dry fit. So what I'm going to do is take the seat. And the seat is going to go into the back. Okay, so this part here, that seat, it has a D-shaped pin on the end that you can see there. And it's going to go into that D-shaped hole that I'm pointing at there. Sorry about my nails, guys. I bite them. They're disgusting. I know they're horrible. And that fits in there perfectly okay so we know that that side fits we're just going to check this side it's going to fit as well and that fits in there beautifully okay really easy fit that's nice right next thing we're going to check is o2s this part here and this is the this is the gunner's bit here with all his um controls and everything and we're going to check this fits in here this probably won't fit very well and as you can see I cannot get, I can force it in if I want to, but if I force it in, what's going to happen more than likely, I'll split that hot, I'll split that apart because I'm pushing it in too hard. Now on the back here, we've got some flash. And I'm just going to, in fact, what I'll do, I will use my file. And I'm just going to sand this off and you can see that, on, I'll show you on the other one in a second. We have some little raised areas. And we have flash. What I'm going to do is remove these little raised areas. Those little raised areas are called ejector pins, ejector pin marks. You'll sometimes see them referred to as EPMs. And we're going to remove those because they are going to affect the fit moving forward. Okay. So there we are. And if you don't have any files like this, I would suggest you go and buy some. You can find them on Amazon or in pound shops very, very cheaply. They won't be exactly the same as this, but you'll get small files that look like these here. and They're absolutely fine for the job. These are sort of professional modeling files, if you like. But we can see on here, you can see on the back of here, where's my pointer? We have, there is raised, there are three large, raised, not large, there are three raised circles there and there is flash you can see that okay so what I'm doing is with my file it's just going across just filing that across there you'll notice that this bit here is raised we don't really want to be sanding that off I did on my I did that on the last one didn't I but um just remove those little raised areas and the flash and you'll see why in a minute okay I remember from doing my first one this was all quite difficult to fit together okay so that's that now we're going to make sure that this goes in now that one's supposed to fit sorry that one's supposed to fit into there and it's extremely tight so what I'm going to do is just on that flat area there you can see this has a d-shaped pin it's all quite difficult to show because it's all black you can see on the end of there there's a d-shaped pin all I'm going to do is on the flat of that pin same on the other side, because remember, you already fitted the other side. Just a couple of strokes, just to remove a little bit of plastic. This plastic is very hard. It's like an ABS material, so don't be worried about... Um, that's going in there. I'm putting the wrong hole. Don't be worried about um, taking too much off. As long as, you, as long as you don't go mad with the file, you'll be fine. You can see that in there now is a very snug fit. Okay, so we want it to be snug so it all stays together. And I've also noticed there's some flash on that side, so I'm going to remove that quickly. And then that should snugly fit into there. You can hear it clip together. It's going together beautifully. Now, one thing I didn't check was if there was flash on this side, and there isn't. So that'll clip in there, and you can hear that goes together beautifully. And then that seat is going to go in like that. Now, so when I did this video first time round, somebody asked me how the gunner could possibly sit in that seat with it like that. Something else I've just noticed. When this goes together, it needs to be straight. Okay, and you can see there, if you look along there, you can see this one is kind of 
an angle like that and this one's down there so what I'm going to do is check which one is right this one is the tightest one so what I'm going to do is just sand a little bit more material off of that one that will allow us then to tip it to the correct angle And there you go. As you can see there, I can get them both together correctly. OK, so, so this is the thing about dry fitting. It's always worth dry fitting. As I say, somebody asked me how the gunner could possibly sit in that seat with it in that position. The seat was actually these points here are actually pivots. So the seat would actually pivot around. So when he got down out of there, it would just it would just fall to that position. There should be seat belts in there, but there aren't. But not to worry about that. Right. So that's gone together there and you can see as per the instructions we've got this here we've got this here okay now don't worry guys this is not how the rest of the model is going to be this is just a complex very detailed little area and it's I, I really like the way that it's like this because it could be so simplified and it wouldn't look half as good as it does okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this base here this is o2q OK, and it's going to go this way up. All right. And what we're going to do is drop this in and you can see we've got these four pins. There's a pin there, a pin there, a pin there and a pin there. And they are going to go in to these four holes. One, two, three, four. OK, so this is literally going to drop down in. Remember, this is all clipped together. It's not glued or anything. And we can see that when I push this down in here, It's quite a snug fit on this side. I'm just going to use the back of this tool just to see if I can push it down in. And as you can see, it doesn't want to go down in. This side, that side, you, can, you heard that clip in quite nicely. But this side, you can see it's sticking up. All right, you can see that sticking up there. It's higher. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove this gently by pushing up on here get that tool out of my hand, push up on that bottom there and then lift this out. Okay and what I'm going to do is using my file I'm just going to go one, two, three, four. Excuse me a second. Sorry guys I had a phone call then so I had to go and get that right so that's come apart from there so we'll just make sure that goes back in. So where were we? We were fitting this in here. I filed those pins off, didn't I? So we'll see how well this goes in now. And this is this is why they say in the instructions dry fit and always read the instructions as well when you're doing these models. Whatever model you're doing, always read the instructions because generally they've built these in the factory. They know what's going on. They know what's what's right and what's wrong. And I know for a fact I've done this before that if these bits here don't fit down in there right, you're going to really struggle with everything else. So that's all gone in there lovely. OK, I'm just going to use the back of one of these files just to see if I can move that over nice and tight into the sides. And you can see there that's fitting down in there now nice and flush. In fact, it is a little high at the front. So I'm just going to take a bit more off. And I'm sorry if you're getting bored, but this is going to help you build your model and get it good. OK, and I'm also going to take a little bit off the other side as well because I want these to sit down in lovely. OK, and I'll show you why in a minute. So that's gone in there. That's gone in there. That's gone in there. Right, there we are. You can see that's all in there now. And I can push these out to the sides and they're lovely. Right. Now, this is why they're telling you to dry fit. These here are the ammunition bins. Now we can see on the top of here, hopefully you can see that, there is like an edge. And what I'm going to do is just file that edge off and remove that little sprue nib because that will stop it fitting together. You can also see on here, there's a little sprue nib where it's been broken off a sprue and there's a little edge. So I'm just going to file that off so it's nice and flat because what happens now these have to go into the side. You can see those two holes in there. 
these have to go into the side of there and if you don't remove all that flash and everything they won't fit in very easily and even though I have removed all that flash and everything you can see they still don't want to go in very easily I'm not going to turn the camera off and just have come back and say there you go it's all done I'm going to show you how to get this together because if you've got yourself one of these you want to be able to build it don't you you can see now you can see inside there the pins are in there everything is fully home okay so I'm going to try this one in the other side just make sure that's gone together and this is why it's so important that these things are sat down in properly and as you can see I'm really struggling to get that one in now I don't want to start forcing stuff because when you start forcing stuff oh, there we go it's gone in when you start forcing things that's when you're going to break them now as you can see it's very difficult to push together so what I'm going to do now is take this apart push that up out and I'm going to check to see if I can actually get this in here and as you can see it does go in but it's very very tight okay that seat keeps wanting to pop out and you can see it's gone in but it's very very tight and if you put it in more than once it should loosen up there we go and that one's lovely that one's gone in there it's a very very snug fit so just bear that in mind and that my friends is why they have suggested and why I'm suggesting you dry build everything up to step three because if you mess if you get this all you can imagine if you've got all this glued in come on go, with it. go in there you can imagine if all this is glued together and that's glued in there and then you can't fit them what are you going to do now what we can do is just file a little bit more off of here file a little bit more off of there that will just make life a little bit easier and if you want to if you've got a knife like this what you can do is come in and just with a knife just scrape a bit of that out or if you've got a round file here's a little round file it's called a needle file you can come into the hole and just turn it anti-clockwise don't ever turn it clockwise because if you turn it clockwise it will drill its way in and that will remove some plastic from there and some plastic from there it's plastic paint whatever and what we want is it to go together nicely like that we don't want to have to force things together it should all go together nice okay so there we are as long as we can get all that to go together nice we can start now on the glue now for the glue I use a Pringles lid Pringles crisps and this is a Nescafe Azira orange lid and the only reason I use that is so that I can see it on the bench if it's clear you can't always see it on the bench and it's also for you guys the super glue of choice I've told about this before flexi 5k CA black thin from VMS absolutely brilliant stuff awesome Put a drop of that on there and there we go right so what we can do here the downside to this glue is the fact that it takes a while to dry the benefit of this glue is the fact that it takes a while to dry so you've got time to play with it it doesn't just glue to because if you use your pan shop glues or whatever and you glue all this together and it's out like that so it's not square so it's out like that and you glue it together then what you'll find is um you can't straighten out whereas with this glue it takes a while I'm not going to glue these pins the reason being I can glue the, glue the seat but the reason being if you remember I had to spread these out to get them to fit in there nicely but also I'm not 100% sure about the orientation of this you can see I've got that much movement in there so I'm not going to glue this here because when we come to fit it all together I want that to fit nicely so what we're going to do we're going to put this in here I'm going to drop that in just like so Okay, and we can see that it all fits lovely so what we're going to do we're going to get a little cocktail stick and we're going to put a drop of glue in each of these four holes and I think this will probably be the longest video I ever make on this project because it's probably the most involved they will ever do 
So now that's just going to drop in there and I can use the back of this file handle just to nudge that over, push that in there, push that in there. You can also see another benefit of this black glue is it's black and everything around it is black. So we can push that out there, push that out there. Okay. So that's fitted in lovely. And then what we can do is take a cotton bud and just with a cotton bud, just mop up that excess glue from the top. Okay. And there we are. That's that all done. Now I can tell you if you get some IPA on your cotton bud, it will actually mop up the excess. All right, so that's glued in there nicely now. So what I'm going to do is hold that in position with my finger. We can see that it's all pushed out. I'm just going to give it another little nudge out to make sure it's staying there. And then you can see we've still got this movement here because we haven't glued that in. And then I can push this on, make sure it's going to fit. I can feel that starting to go in. So I know we're good to go there. There we are, that's gone in. So I'm just going to put a drop of this glue on here. Okay, it doesn't need much because they're such a nice fit. They probably stay in there without any glue at all. But um, there we go, that's gone in there. I'm just going to hold this one down with my finger. I'm just going to check. Just going to dry fit this, check that it goes in. Yes, it does. So we can take our cocktail stick. A drop of glue in there and then we can glue this one in like so there you can see that's all gone in all right now I hope I haven't scared you off um, because that wasn't the intention the intention here is to show you how to get this together if you're pulling your hair out and you can't manage it then that's what I wanted to do right so you can see that's all gone together there beautifully and that is up to step three. Now what they're telling us to do is put these bags on. They're telling us to glue these in place. I'm not sure if they need gluing. No, they don't. They clip on beautifully. You may wish to leave these off because I'm not actually sure they ever had them. And apparently the um, ejection chutes in the front turret were cut off short anyway, so they probably wouldn't have been able to fit them even if they did want to. Right, so now we're getting to some fiddly little bits. So you can see here we have these two handles. These are control handles. Two control levers, OTG, L, OTG, R. Check how the D-shaped pegs fit in holes on either side of the gun sight. Apply a small drop of super glue and glue in place. And the control lever, L, in place over the seat, O2H. So basically the, the little control over there, I believe that is a lock. Um, you pull it up to unlock it. I believe you can lock the turret in the forward position with that little handle. So we've got these little, little handlebar type things here, which are the gunner's control levers. You can see they're tiny. All right, and we're gonna make sure they go the right way around. So we've basically got, they should be facing, if you can imagine, he's gonna hold them like this. So they should be angling back. So that one there, is angling back and I'm going to grab a pair of tweezers and again as I say I'm going to check fit first that's going to go into that hole there yeah and that's gone in fine so I'm just going to get some glue onto there and drop that into that hole so that's gone in like that and then this side I'm going to grab that lever there And get that into that hole there so there you can see how they should look those little tiny levers are in there okay and then this little tiny control lever this is the little part O2L I'm just going to make sure I've got that correct just going to dip it in the glue I didn't test fit it did I should have done that was very naughty of me well, I do remember from my last one, it's a very loose fit. So that can go in like that. Okay, so that's that's showing you there. We've got those two levers in like that. Okay. So there we go. 
that's all gone together lovely right now it's moving on to the guns and I'm just going to stop for a second so we can let that dry okay so regarding these guns um, the first thing we want to do is check one that they work and check that the ends aren't blocked up with paint and um, we're going to because you also have some problems with light coming through the sides so we're going to deal with that as well so what I'm going to do is take my little battery tester here and using the J2 position I'm going to plug this in okay just plug that into there and I don't think you're going to be able to see it but they are lit up I'm going to turn the lights off and then hopefully you'll be able to see it um, which one I've not plugged in this one and you may just be able to see down in there There you are, you can see it there, that gun is lit up. Now it's not flashing because it hasn't got a timer going. But basically what they're asking you to do is just check to see that you've got no issues with your um, with the end being blocked up. Now what I've got here is some glass files, super fine glass file here. So we can just gently stroke over the end. And I don't know if you can see that, but that file is actually polished file is actually polished here and you can see now how much brighter that is when you look at it straight on okay so we'll disconnect that make sure you pull on the connector and not on the wires come on there we go and we're just going to push this one into there that is the right way around Okay, and we can see that one's lit up. Yeah, and I'm just going to, what I'm going to do with this glass file, I'm just going to polish, polish the end. And that should make it a bit brighter. So when the machine guns flash, they'll flash a bit brighter. And I'm just going to check around here, check we don't have any light coming through. You can see we have light coming through there, but that's in the centre where the pin's going to go. I'm just looking around and I can't see any light leakage anywhere else. So that's good. So we'll disconnect that. And we'll put our lights back on so we can see what we're doing. Right. And we'll also take the battery out of there and put that to one side because we don't need that again. Right. So what it's asking us here to do is assemble these guns. Now, the first thing I notice here, I know this from doing it before. You can see here they have the wires coming down at the back. The wires have to go down at the back. Um, bend the cables at the rear of the machine guns downwards so that they do not foul on the back part O2Q. Right, so it's best to do that now, I believe. So identify your guns. You can see here they have these little two, there's two little lumps on the bottom there. There's nothing, this side is smooth and this side has the two lumps. So you can see that that one is your left hand side gun because we've got the pivot pin on this side and the lumps at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just bend these wires down at the back and it's horrible. It feels like they're going to snap, but I did it on the last one and they didn't snap. So there we go. They're, they're bent down and then the same on this one, two lugs at the bottom and then we should be able to bend that down. And I'm just, if you're a snap, I'm sorry, but you may be able to get replacements from hatchet because it's part of the build. They tell you to bend them down, but they just feel like they're going to snap, but they don't. That's four I've done now and they haven't snapped. So that's good. Right. So we've got that done now. So now we can assemble these as per the magazine. So we've got this is our left one. And then we've got this part here. So this is O2RL. <laughs> They've called it O2R. <laughs> it's O2RL. Um, this one is O2RR. This is O2RL, so that's going to basically sit on there like that. And then this pin is going to go in the center and just press in. And it's a very tight fit indeed. But it does go in, believe me. Now, I'm saying this does go in, believe me. It's feeling like this one is not going to go in. At all. There we 
there we go it's popped in now that went in really easily in the end but it didn't want to go in initially what I'm going to do is lay this gun down and I'm going to get the back of this tool and just press it in it doesn't seem to want to go any further but what I don't want is these guns to be all floppy I want it to be a nice snug fit so I'm pushing it in as hard as I can go and it won't go any tighter so we've got what we've got that's it right so put this one here in make sure you've got the bottom down okay and this angular piece here is facing back so we can put that in grab this pin put the pin in line it up with the hole in the gun and push it in just like so and then push that in. you can hear how tight that was going in got a dog hair there sorry Okay, so that one's gone in and again we don't seem to be able to get them there we are so that's gone in like that okay so there's our left and our right so we can go over the page now and what it's doing now is asking us to fit the ammo belts so we've got the ammo belts like this they've got this square lump at the top and the angle off at the bottom and you can see this one is going that way and this one is going that way okay so we want this one is for the for the left all right so this is your left side so this one's going to go in there like so it says apply a little glue I don't think you need it And then this one's going to go in there, like so. Just push that in. Don't put any glue on the pin, just put the glue on the small pins if you're going to glue it at all. Um, there we go, that's gone in there like that. And then, I don't think they need gluing actually, to be honest. Um, and then we're going to fit the ammunition shoots into the base so we're going to get back to our base here so we've got these shoots so we've got a left and a right all right so it's easy to see which is which because we've got when you look at this radius you've got the back end here is up higher than the front and you've got this peg here which is facing inwards so this one is the right hand side so again I'm going to use my tweezers to put this in position Like so, does that need glue? It doesn't even want to go in the hole. Yeah, that's a very snug fit in there. So we just push it down at the bottom. tiny I'm going to actually what I'm going to do I'm going to get my file again and I'm going to just file file some meat off it there just so it goes in easier should be able to push it in by the bottom Is a very very tight fit which I'm not happy about I want it to be fitting easier than that I don't want to be forcing stuff because that's when you break things when you force them that's very strange but I'm kind of glad I'm having this problem and then if you have the same problem that I'm showing you how to get around it, I'm just filing material off the side of this piece because it's like a D-shaped pin that's going in there. That's better. There we go. Right, so 
You want to try and get a fit so that, you know, it just it goes together. I'm just going to dip that pin in some super glue, just like so. So it's got some glue on the end. And then just push that down in. And then push it down and home, just like so. Here we go. I'm going to check the fit of this one as well. In fact, what I should have done was fitted this one before I glued the other one. Again, that one is very tight. So again, I'm going to file some plastic away the side of there. And then put that one in. Again, that one is also very tight. I would probably suggest if I was doing another one of these, fit these before you fit anything. Do this first. Don't glue them, just file them to fit. And as you can see, that one there, you can see I can push that all the way down in now. It's very difficult to see, I know, because everything's black, but I can actually fit that all the way in now. So I'm just going to put some glue on the pin, just like so, and then plonk that down in there and give it a nudge, and down it goes. What we can do is grab some glue on a cocktail stick and just put some in that gap. Glue those two together if you want to. There we go. There we are. That's all gone together lovely. Right. So now the next thing is to actually fit the guns. So the wire is going to go down through the back here. Okay, and it's going to go under, under there. All right, so this, this is going to go down here. You can see there's there's a hole here and there's a hole there. Okay, there's a hole there and there's a hole there, and that's where that's gonna go. And that gun has got to go into those holes inside of that part there. Okay, so you can see what I'm gonna show you again. That wire has got to go under here through this hole and inside of this piece here. This piece here that's going up vertically, the gun is going to sit on the inside of that, not on the outside. Okay, so your gun is going into there, like so, and that pivot is going to sit in those two holes. Just going to push that one over, get it to go in the hole. Again, that is a very tight fit in its base as well. There we go, you just heard that clip in. So, what I'm going to do now is take this out of here and I'm going to put a drop of super glue. Just a small drop on each of those pins without it all moving around. Oh, stay where you are, little blighter. And then we're going to push this back down in. Just I'm trying to do this so you can see what I'm doing. Now I can't see what I'm doing. That's the trouble. There we go. That's gone in like that. And just give that a nudge down at the top. Okay, and you can see that that frame there is immediately fitted into those. There's a little slot in there and that frame's gone into it. So that's why I didn't glue. If you remember, I didn't glue this piece to these side pieces to start with. And that's, so that's the reason why. There we go. That's gone down in lovely. Our gun can pivot fairly freely. As I say, this glue doesn't dry instantly, so you know, bear that in mind. You're going to have to give it a little bit of time to dry for using this glue. Now, this time, 
I'm going to put the glue in these holes. So I'm going to put a drop of glue into there. And I'm going to put a drop of glue into there. Okay, and then I'm going to get my cotton bud and just mop up any excess. And then this wire is going to go through this hole at the back. Okay, so we're going to pull that down through there. And then the gun is going to be underneath that frame and it's going to go inside of that vertical member. We're going to turn that pivot over. Just like so. Okay. And then that is going to fit into those two holes. Here we are. It's gone in now. Okay, and you can check the gun. The gun can move, that gun can still move. There we are. And this is all falling off because the glue hasn't dried. If the glue has dried, I've broken it. <laughs> so I'll put some more glue on there. I'll glue that back in there. Give it a squeeze with the tweezers just to make sure it's gone together. There we are. Right. So that's all gone together. Now if you want to, what you can do is come along here with your cocktail stick. A little drop of glue on the end and just put it in there. And let that glue capillary into that gap so you've got a nice strong joint. Just like so. Okay. Just mop up the excess. There you are. And then we're going to make sure that we've got these pieces here aligned at the top. Now that one is twisted around slightly, so what I'm going to do is move that bracket out of the way there. Just bend that around to make it a bit more willing to stay on there. There we go. You can see it still doesn't want to stay on there, so I'm going to bend that out of the way. Bend that one around just to try and make it want to stay on there. There we go. And then I'm going to get another drop of glue because this glue is starting to dry out a bit. Sorry guys, this is a pretty long video, isn't it? Blind me. But I'm trying to cover all the aspects I've seen. Other people do this and they don't cover it 100%. I guess for the fear of boring you to death. Which I'm very good at. But you can always fast forward. There we go. That's all gone together. Okay, now we can turn the page and we've now got to add this upper support frame and this will bring everything together. So this is going to go this way round. It's going to sit in this in these two holes either side. Again, these are a very tight fit. At least this side is. So I'm going to take it off rather than force it. I'm going to take that one off and I'm just going to, yes you can see we've got some flush 
on that pin on the sides. So I'll just remove that flash from there and then it should fit in there lovely. In fact what I'll do is fit it the wrong way round. Let's check it fits the hole. Yes it does. You can see the difference there that just drops straight in there now. Just for removing a little bit of flash. That's going to sit on there like that and that is going to glue on there. Okay so what we'll do is we'll pull this up out of here same on that side and we'll put some glue on these pins like so and then we'll drop that down into there like that again use our cotton bud mop up the excess so they've glued it nice and solid and then these here that is going to glue onto there and onto there so we can just push those together just like so and leave them to dry As you can see, once it's all glued up and everything, it's going to be a very, very solid little assembly once the glue dries. So there you go. That's what you're aiming for. There's your turret. And it's very nice. It's very beautifully done. You know, for a part work, it really is. Very nice indeed. OK, I wouldn't play with these guns too much. I just get them so they're both level and then leave them as they are. All right. So there we are, there's everything together. I've managed to move that in again, haven't I? Get off. Right. So there we go. Right, we're going to have a little break now. And we're back. So, um, that glue's all dried off now and everything's all nice. So, next stage is stage 13. Fit the inner rear wall of the turret to the back of the turret floor. Three rectangular pegs at the back of the part. You do not need to glue this part in place. Right. You will find this part will not fit. This peg here in the centre is a lot wider than the slot in the part. So, I've come in with my file and I've basically opened it out, filed it out, and got it all nice and clear. Okay. So, now I can slide the part on and it fits nicely without having to force it the sides need to be slightly filed as well but um i thought rather than bore you with any more filing because this video is just going on and on and on um i thought i'd get it done now don't glue it it says you don't need to glue it in place you can glue it in place if you want to but don't do it yet because obviously depending on where your frame sits is how that's going to sit this frame is going to basically sit in here in here if I can get it over the guns there we go that frame is going to basically sit on there with the clear part inside and it's that that's going to determine the angle that goes at so don't glue it yet okay so now moving on this is a very special part uh, part 14 we're going to fit the clear part to the actual frame so we've got the clear part here and we've got the actual frame here so fit the gun turret canopy O2A into the gun turret ensure that all the struts in the frame fit into the recesses in the canopy it is a tight fit so adjust it until it just snaps into place now, I'm going to take a bit out of my last video that I did on part two and just edit in here now. And it's going to talk about um, a treatment I do to my clear parts. So watch that now and then I'll come back and show you the difference. And then it's asking us to fit the glazing. Now, here's my little trick. When you put this together, OK, you will see this shiny chrome. So what I'm going to do is take a Sharpie. Just like so and I'm going to go all the way around here and I'm going to color in all the edges of the clear so what I'm trying to do is not I'm not trying to get the the bottom of the if you imagine this this slot is like a U I want the sides to be black not the bottom but the bottom is going to get colored as well but what I'm trying to do is color in all the edges 
where we've got framework going. Okay. Just like so. And I'll go all the way around and do the same thing on every one. All right, and there we go. As you can see, we've got all the excess off. I've just, got, just gone around with a cotton bud with IPA on it, isopropyl alcohol. If you don't have any, um, it's very good to have around the house. Uh, in the recent pandemic, it was great for cleaning stuff off that you suspected may not be clean enough. Um, it's fantastic stuff to have around. Um, and you, as you can see, you can wipe it over that clear part completely safely. And what we've done, we've actually coloured in all the edges. So you can see now, when we look at the clear part, we don't have that chrome-like glistening edge. And when we fit it inside here, it will look a million times better for having this done. So I'll just make sure it's centred. And then just kind of press it in until it clips into place, I guess. Which is easier said than done. It does go, I'm guessing it will go eventually. Hmm. I'm worried about pushing it too hard for fear of breaking it. The last thing you want to do here is crack the clear part because that will uh, really ruin the look of the turret overall. Let's try and unclip it a minute. Right. So let's try and push it on square rather than going in front first. Okay, that seems to be the way. Push it in square up underneath rather than trying to go in front first. As you can see, it will all clip in. And now, when you look at that, you can see we've got this black framing all around the clear, which looks so much better than that brilliant bright chrome. And now what we can do is just wipe over it again with some isopropyl on a cloth just make sure we've got got rid of all the excess just like so and there we are all right so you've seen how I did it there in the previous video and how it went together and everything and this is the difference I can show you now so you can choose whether you want to do it or not but you can see on this one on the right, I haven't done it. And you can see that when we see it, we catch it in the light. You've got all these bright chrome edges around everything. Whereas with the black one, you've got the black. OK, so that's why I do it is to get rid of all that brightness in there. OK, you can see if I catch it in the light there, you can see all around, all around the frames here is all that chrome. And that hasn't actually gone in properly there. There you go. You can see all that chrome look around there so you can choose which one you want to go for so basically now going over the page we're going to fit this onto here so put that one to one side we'll fit this onto here so we make sure the guns go through the slots and then that is basically going to go on there so what they're telling you to do here is glue this frame glue that frame to the rear wall here okay and then clamp it all in place i would suggest using a white glue i wouldn't use super glue because if you get any glue going inside and it's trapped it will fog all your clear parts up they'll, they'll end up with look like there's a mist in there okay but as you can see the turret is beautifully detailed there's lots of detail inside there you can see um and basically you don't want to be fogging up your clear parts so the next thing to do now is to fit this base. OK, this base is going to go this way up. This is part um, 020, OK, 
020, whatever it is, 02, yeah, 020. Um, so the wire is going to go up through there. That's going to sit on there like that. All right. And then this rear piece is just going to clip into there, into those four holes, just like that. It's that simple. Now, you may not want to glue any of this, and you don't have to, because when it all goes together, this here is going to sit down into the fuselage, and then this here will be trapped. I can show you the part because I've got it here. Okay, this is the forward section, and that is going to come down into that hole. And you can see there you've got your Lancaster nose there, and that is going to hold it all together. Okay, so you might not want to glue any of that in your place. I don't think you're going to have to. If we do, we do, but. If we don't have to, why bother gluing it if it's going to all stay together? If you are a sucker for accuracy, um, during this period of time, this area of the, was a stick, this area here would have been brown in line with that brown. So you can spray that in dark earth or brown colour, match this up. That canopy frame would have been brown. Okay, so bear that in mind. Right. So there we go, guys. That is... Um, I believe the gun turret has been assembled. Instructions for the fuselage details and frame are continued in the next issue. The nose blister section 02E will be fitted in a future issue. Store the parts carefully until they are needed. Okay, this is part 02E. Okay, so we'll go back to our parts contents. Our pack contents, should I say. Okay, so this is 02E and this is the bomb aimers underneath the blister that's what you can look down through so that's going to go that is going to actually sit at the end of the day that is going to sit in there okay that's where that's going to go in there like that all right so that's what that is there um we've got this antenna here which is going to fit in part three which i suggest you don't do because that's just going to get snapped off and then we've got a control panel here that's going to go that's going to go into here like so okay and then we've got this window here and that's obviously going to go into there when we're ready to do it that's going to go into there like that okay so that's all going to be part of part three so I hope you enjoyed that. As I say, I'm sorry it went on so long, but I really did want to show you all the, the bits and pieces to get it, get it to go together nicely. And um, I still keep squeezing this one over. I'm going to put some proper super glue on there so it locks it in place. Uh, and then I won't, I'll just put it on there and just leave it. Um, but basically, I keep knocking that out of place. So get these wires tied up, get them um, taped up or something so they don't keep dangling around. But uh, and then you're ready to put all this away. So put it all away <clears throat> for storage. As I say, get yourself one of these little takeaway pots. Um, you can put your little parts in a bag. Okay, so we've got that part there is going in there. And I've got in the bottom of here, I should have my pitot tube, whatever I've done with it. I don't know what I've done with it. It's here somewhere. And we will put that away. Here it is. We'll take our pitot tube and we'll put that in there with it. Okay, so we can seal that up and put that in there. We've got our clear parts here, which are going to be for part three. So they can go in there as well. All right, we've got all this here to store. And what I do is I keep everything in a box. You can see I've got everything up to part six. It's all stored here neatly in a box. Okay, so thank you for watching and I'll see you next Saturday for part three. If I've in fact got part three by then. Um, but I, I will see see you when I actually get it. So thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that. Any questions, pop them down below and I will answer them for you. Or somebody else will, somebody who's building the model or whatever. Bye for now.